guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. Super excited because I have new goodies to play with today. Um, so I ordered myself these woodware stamps. I had seen them in a shop a while back and thought they were lovely. And you know what it's like when you don't buy them because you think, well, the last thing I need is more stamps. And then you get home and you can't stop thinking about them. So I looked them up online and actually um, managed to get them slightly cheaper. So they're woodware um, stamps. Now, I don't know whether woodware are a brand that's only really here in the UK. They're certainly, you know, woodware is a UK um, brand. I don't know whether these are available elsewhere, um, but you know, I'm sure if you look online, you'd be able to get them sort of somewhere online. Um, I think I paid about five pounds, I think, for each one of these. So, um, you know, not the cheapest, but not too, too awful either. But aren't they just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous stamps? So this one here with the butterfly is called Vintage Swallowtail, and it's by Woodwear. This one here is called Be a Dreamer. And then this one here is called Film Strip. So they're the three stamps if you wanted to, you know, look them up at all or anything. And I'm just going to have a bit of a play. I haven't even opened them yet. So I thought I would come along and, you know, stamp them with you guys. I've got some of my beeswax um, book page and I thought we could play around and see how they are on the beeswax. But before I do that, I'm going to stamp them off on just, you know, some book page that I haven't beeswaxed because I don't want to obviously, you know, I haven't ever stamped it before. I don't know how it's going to stamp. So um, I sometimes find that stamps do need stamping off a couple of times, you know, before using them. Well, not just the first time, but, you know, forever more, I do find that they often need stamping off. Now, excuse my stamp block. Yeah, hideous condition. I don't really look after my stamp blocks at all. I was shamed into buying a new stamp block or a couple of new stamp blocks about a year and a half ago because I was so embarrassed showing them online. And to be honest, within a couple of weeks of using them, they just looked as bad as these anyway. So, um, yeah, they're, they're just not not um, looked after, I'm afraid. But they still work fine, so that's that's all good. Um, I mean, obviously, it might be a problem if you definitely needed to see where you're stamping, but, you know, hopefully I'm going to just have a bit of random stamping. And if I needed to see, I could always stick the stamp down and then place the block over once the stamp's on the, on the page. So let's just see how that stamp comes out. I'm just going to stand up because I do find it easier to stamp it up. Right, so as you can see, I mean, obviously... Sometimes when stamps are first used, they're exceptionally thirsty um, and they do suck up a lot of ink. So hopefully I'm going to get a slightly better impression now. So I'm certainly glad that I did it on the naked book page first. So it's getting a little bit darker. I'll just then stamp it again. And hopefully it's going to get better with each stamp. Oh, is it getting any darker? I can't really tell. <laughs> it's uh, a bit annoying. I have also got a new stays on ink pad, so I might open that in a minute, but that one's black. This is timber brown, which I thought might have been nicer, but if I'm not going to get, you know, a very good impression, I might. Right, let me open my new stays on. So now I know that I've talked before about the stays on ink pads, I absolutely, sorry, it was on the floor. <laughs> it was on the floor beside my desk. Um, I know that I've talked before about the stays on ink pads. Obviously, you know, use the ink pads that you find suit you. I love the stays on ink pads. I know not everybody does. I know that I have heard people say about it eating into your stamps and things like that. And certainly once you've stamped onto your stamp with a stays on ink pad, your stamp is not going to look clean really again. Um, I mean, that doesn't worry me because obviously they're going to be used, you know, I don't need them looking pristine and brand new. I'd rather be able to use them properly. Um, also, the stays on does have quite a strong smell when it's new. Personally, I quite like that. <laughs> but again, I've obviously heard lots of people say that they're not very keen on the smell of it. So, um, 
yeah, just uh, something to be a bit aware of there. Right, now I'm wondering whether my stamp block is too lumpy. Because I'm still not really getting a good impression. So it may be that I've got, you know, where I've got sort of glue and things on there. It's not coming out very well. Let me just try on another on another couple of book pages and we'll just see whether it's whether it's improving. Otherwise this is not going to be a very successful video, is it? Okay, let's try. So again, just really press that down. Okay, well it's coming out a little bit better. So again, just ink that up. I just want to do it until I get, you know, a really crisp, clear stamped impression. Okay, so it's getting better now. So hopefully just one more time and hopefully then I might be able to use it on my, on my beeswaxed page. So going on there like that. Oh, gorgeous. Right, so I'm going to now take in my beeswaxed page and I'm going to stamp it onto there. So again, just really, you know, ink the stamp up nicely. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous stamp. So um Stamp it down here. Okay. So, lovely stamp, isn't it? Now, just wondering whether it actually shows up better on just the book page. I'm not sure now. Mm. Yeah, perhaps I should have opened these before, obviously... <laughs> coming along and um, thinking I would just experiment around with these. It's always a bit of a gamble, isn't it? But I thought, oh, well, I'm sure it will be fine. Now, the other thing that I have got here is I finally ordered some black soot distress ink and I've been talking about ordering this for ages. So I've finally got some. So let's just open that up. Okay. So I hadn't bought anything for a really long time, so I obviously went mad and decided to um, order a few things. Okay, so I'm just going to tear this around. Okay, and get rid of that. And then just take my blending tool and I'm just going around the edge now obviously I've never had black soot before so you know I'm not 100% how this is going to look but hey this is uh, a time for experimenting clearly in this video so <laughs> oh well in for a penny in for a pound as they say let's just uh, go for that I mean I love just how that looks you know as it is I am going to I think actually just tear this one down oh my gosh I'm so sorry if you heard that, which I'm sure you must have heard, that really loud motorbike just then go past. It sounded so loud, like it was practically in my house. But yeah, um, I don't know what kind of bike it was, but it was certainly super, super loud. So sorry about that, guys, if it just drowned out anything else that we were doing. Right, and again, just going to ink that up with the black soot like that okay okie dokie so I mean to be honest I actually quite like it on on both I haven't really decided which I think is my preference I think it's really nice on both now I'm thinking I'm going to try and add a little bit of colour. Now this is, well, well, this is very not my, 
not my normal type of thing. But I've got my gorgeous Distress Ink Oxides that I received in Happy Mail. And I've only so far used these two. I haven't opened this one yet. So this one is called Fossilised Amber. So again, let's just open that up. Okay, right. Okay, I'm going to get my brushes. Okay, so I have got my brushes now. I also ordered these. I've never had any of these before. So I ordered, these are the water brushes, you know, for painting. Now, again, I'm probably the last person on the planet to actually get these. I'd obviously seen lots of other people using them, you know, because I don't really kind of play around that much with what I call artists kind of materials. I'd never had any of these. But I've just that second opened it and found out how to actually um, fill it with water. So I'm going to experiment around with this. So I'm going to try it on this one first. Actually, I say that. I'm going to just pull in the um, beeswax paper. And I'm using this fossilised amber. And um, what I'm going to do is just squeeze out a little bit. Right, so can you see on the wax paper, it's resistant. It's not wanting to, to paint on there. Okay, so I did wonder whether that would be the case, which was why I thought I'd just try it on that. So I'm going to move this one out of the way and we'll take the book page piece instead. So I'm going to just go around and actually use that a bit like a palette, I think. And I'm just going to paint in on the clock section of this. So there, like that. Okay, and maybe I will just do a bit here on this sort of postmark. Might need a bit more, so again. So it's quite good using this as a palette because it's just resting on the page, which, you know, that's working out quite handy. But obviously on this, it's actually sinking straight in, which is, you know, more what we want, I guess. And then I'm going to just mix this, or not mix it really, but paint some onto the butterfly here. So I'll just put some yellow, or the, the fossilised amber, perhaps I should say, not really yellow, um, just here on the butterfly like that. And again, just, you know, anywhere really, like that, okay. And then I might have a little bit more Maybe kind of here a bit on the the wings of the butterfly. Maybe a little bit up there. Looks quite nice. Maybe here on these little pieces. Just down there on the butterfly. Now, do I want it anywhere else? I just want to sort of experiment a bit how it would look if I kind of try and, you know, um, just like rub some in. I don't know whether, yeah, that's not really seeming to work at all. So, right, so, okay, that doesn't really work at all. So I know for next time, don't bother doing that. Let's just put that one in the bin. Let me just fold this bit page up and I can use this now as my palette for the other color. So let's use this gorgeous broken china. And I know that I used this broken china um, when I was doing my number stamps um, that were inspired by Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful colour, isn't it? Okay. So we just try and kind of mix that in a bit with the yellow, kind of blend it from the yellow want it quite watery I don't want it looking kind of too too solid just want it kind of merging in a little bit like that okay and again on the other side Oops. I mean, again, probably if I actually had a palette, this would be so much better rather than using the book page. But I do have a palette. But again, I just 
hadn't really prepared properly so now I'm just just winging it as you do okay so that's really pretty now do we want maybe some blue here in like the body of the um, butterfly I mean it's really not showing very much because obviously the lot of that is black but just a tiny bit uh, yeah yeah I quite like that so again let's just move that one out the way and yeah let's use this gorgeous cracked pistachio I love this color so much so okay and again just squeeze out a little blob of the water so hopefully again I can just have this very soft coming in from that that middle part okay and then there again I mean what's quite nice with the book page it's easy to get that really soft effect because it just soaks straight through to the page if you see what I mean it's coming through on the back so that's um, lightening the effect I guess you know whereas otherwise if this were on well like more sheeny paper it would obviously just sit on the paper and wouldn't really have such a nice blended sort of effect there so I'll just put a bit more here at the bottom of that butterfly and maybe just a little bit then round the round the edges oops I'm probably not really using this properly. I'm probably shouldn't be dipping the brush into the ink pad or anything like that. <laughs> I don't know. But I guess again, this is, you know, part of my point about, you know, just play, you know, don't, don't kind of think, oh, that's not for me. I mean, I do think things like that all the time. And, you know, why do we have to feel that way? You know, it's kind of a self-imposed thing, isn't it? Because these products they're out there for everybody of course so um you know it's nice to kind of experiment around and play with them right so that's that piece now I'm wondering what would happen if I tried to um beeswax that now whether or not that would just completely smudge what I've actually done here I don't know whether it would or not but the other thing that I might do I wonder oh my gosh look I've now destroyed my ink pad. Oh, I totally forgot that I had just used that with that black sit. Oh no, oh no. Oh. Let me try and scrub that clean. Okay. Okay, right. Cleaner. Oh, that was um, a bit hairy, wasn't it? Right. Now, do I want the green? Mm. do I want the blue Let me just get some of that green off of the brush before I now contaminate the blue with the green although it won't be quite so evident as the um the black sit will it right going to just do a little bit of this here don't want it kind of too dark and too um What's the word? Kind of, yeah, too heavy. I just want it sort of light sort of patches. Like that. Get in there. And then I just wonder whether we could do some with the green and the yellow actually. So let me again just clean my brush off a little bit. Maybe up there a bit. Okay, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? I, do you know what? I'm just wondering, and I know this is really weird, whether to add some of the Victorian velvet yeah this could be way 
way off the charts and kind of say, whoa, what are you doing? But for some reason, I've just got a bit of an urge to give that a try. So again, let me just wipe this off a bit. I just feel like it needs something else as a slight contrast. Now, I've had my Victorian velvet for a very long time, so it's not kind of too, too dark or anything. Perhaps if it was new, it would look very, you know, very strange. But because I've had it for quite a long time, it's, you know, it's not too dark or anything. So I quite like how that just lifts that slightly. I might just have a little bit there. Just sort of around the edge of that butterfly. It's just kind of highlighting the butterfly a little bit. It was gorgeous, doesn't it? Really, really pretty. So let's get that out of the way. Now, do I dare go in with my beeswax? What do you think? Well, I mean, we won't know unless we try, will we? So yeah, let's give it a try. Let me flick my iron on. Oops, which is down beside me. Grab my beeswax up. Oh, I hope this isn't going to just smudge it everywhere. It may do. It may do. Oh, sorry about that. That was my sister. So it's just one of those days, I'm afraid, today. Right, all I'm going to do is now try and melt my wax onto the piece. Now, as I say, this may smudge and go horrible. Aha, uh -huh, it's worked okay. I mean, obviously it has dispersed that colour slightly, so it's not quite so strong and prominent as it perhaps was, but it's not really smudged it too, too badly. So, I mean, that's gorgeous, isn't it? And obviously, you know, that um, distressing with the water was not wanting to stick on there at all on top of the wax surface. So if you then wanted to kind of wax, you know, have the wax surface, Waxing it afterwards is a really great, you know, great way to do that. <laughs> you know, flukely, who knew? Definitely, yeah, definitely not me. <laughs> so that's kind of that stamp. And looks just so pretty, doesn't it? And just lovely. So I'm now thinking what we could do is just... Will that fit on here? Yeah, so I've got some of my waxed pages here. So I'm just going to fold that over and move this out of the way a bit. Okay. And I'm just thinking we could make a little sort of booklet or something with the that really nice butterfly page on there. So I think what I'll do is go around this with the black soot because that would be keeping in theme with this I think so yeah let me just move these bits and bobs out of the way I don't think we're going to have time to play with this one unfortunately so let's, let's bring in the, the black suit I'd wanted this black suit for ages um, because I'd you know I'd seen lots of people use it so I'm really pleased to have it now I mean, obviously it's very inky because it is brand new, but hopefully I will get a bit more used to it and won't be quite so quite so obvious when I'm dabbing it on as I have been here. It takes a while, doesn't it, to get used to new things. Okay, and I'm going to just ink up now on the inside as well. Yeah, I don't know whether Woodware have got other new stamps. I mean, those were the ones that I saw. And actually, I didn't even see the film strip one in the shop. I only saw that one online. So I don't know whether they've got some others out. But, um, you know, like everyone, obviously, I, I love it when places get new products. You know, that's really exciting, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I thought they were just gorgeous and couldn't resist then trying some out. Right, so we've got that there. Now I'm just again wondering what else we might like to do. I mean, what we could do 
is stamp just the center to produce another butterfly and have that kind of like a decoupage piece um so sorry um <laughs> That was obviously my sister still trying to get hold of me because I obviously thought, oh, I'll phone her, you know, after I finish the video. But yeah, she obviously wanted to speak to me sooner. So um, yes, I've spoken to her now. So um, right now I picked up that green number because actually that goes really nicely on there. I've got one of my black words, which I know I'm using them all the time lately, but I really like them. Because they're such a nice kind of contrast, I think. So we could have that like that. And then we could have a little bit of either some book pages. Sorry, I just grabbed in my, my scraps pile or some doily. So let's just have a look and see. That's quite nice, isn't it? So, right, let's glue that down. Okay. Let's glue that down. Oops. Okay. Oops. Oh, I've got just a piece of the book page. So I'm just going to glue that down here like that. And do we want a bit of doily somewhere as well? It's quite nice, isn't it? Or I just wonder whether we could have a bit of doily over it. I know that's a little bit weird, but Do you think? Do you think that's a bit too strange? Oh, decisions, decisions. It's tough sometimes deciding, isn't it? Uh, I mean, yeah, for me, it feels a little bit weird putting it on top. I never really do things like that. Um, well, I mean, never say never, obviously. But when I now have moved it underneath, it feels a bit boring. What if I make this smaller? maybe it's just a little bit too too gigantic on there right I think I prefer it yeah like that so I'm just going to glue this down on the front Okay. It's got such a lovely feel once it's got that beeswax on it. Because obviously it feels kind of, um, not rubbery exactly, but obviously, I mean, it has a nail texture where it didn't before. So I do really like the feel of it. And that's still got some black soot on it, so I don't need to even re-dip it. Okay, and again, I'm just going to rough up my word a little bit. I just like that because it makes them have a bit more texture. So something like that, I think, looks quite nice. And of course, of course, it wouldn't be one of our pieces would it if we didn't have a bit of lace so let's just see I'm wondering if we might like a bit of lace underneath the number and the word so let's just have a look here oh gosh let me stick this down because then it's not going to keep moving otherwise every time I touch something it's then moving which of course then is not really ideal Okay. There we go. 
And if we have the lace, whoops, the lace that's now stuck on me rather than the piece. Oh, stop it. It's, <laughs> it's literally stuck on me. Yep. Oh, okay. So, I mean, that's quite nice. Or actually, we could have it even lower so it's kind of hanging off. Hanging off at the bottom, perhaps. Perhaps that's nicer. Just kind of, um, you know, to give it a little bit extra. And now just having a look to see what else I've got laying about just laying around kind of on the desk that I might be able to pull in and um, work with. I mean, I have got this black lace just that happened again to be just laying on the desk. Um, it's a little bit chunky and quite, you know, it's not really delicate enough for that piece. So that's a bit of a shame. Um, let's see what else I've got. Got some daffodils. I mean, they're like a little bit, little bit bright, perhaps on there. Got a little shoe. Ooh, the shoe's kind of nice. Right, let me just use that black soot again. Just to ink around the edge of the shoe. My son's gone back to CrossFit today um, for the first time since the lockdown. So bless him. I think he was, I think he was dreading it. Well, he was looking forward to going, but dreading it in the same breath because obviously, you know, CrossFit's incredibly hard work. So um, where he's not been, obviously, for you know, I don't know how long it's been, but six months, seven months, I don't know, five months, quite a long time anyway. I think he was quite nervous. So my husband's just taken him at the moment and. Um, my daughter as well she's gone but you know she's not gone obviously to do crossfit but she can just be in there whilst he's doing the crossfit and it's really nice because the lady who runs it she's got a daughter the same age as mine so they can sit and play together and things so it's really nice and obviously it's really nice for me because I can get on and do some videoing which is awesome now mm. I think maybe I like the shoe better than the word weirdly enough I know weird don't know why I don't know why because that shoe really you know doesn't kind of fit doesn't fit with the stamp at all but for some reason it just goes really nicely on there doesn't it yeah I really like it so then what I'm going to do, I think, is I want to somehow reinforce this spine because you can probably see it's already sort of beginning to crack there. So I'm going to reinforce that and then I probably put some pages in this to have a little booklet, I think. Or actually what we could do, what we could do, I mean, this video has just evolved really kind of on the fly, but let me get some more of my waxed pages. Just thinking what we could do is have like a sort of fold out like that. That doesn't help obviously with the reinforcing unless of course I... Hmm. Oh, this one's now cracking as well. So, okay, little note there is that obviously the beeswax isn't overly liking being folded. So, yeah, that's kind of worth knowing, isn't it? But I'm thinking that would be quite a nice little piece, wouldn't it? Could even have this as a pocket in the middle, um, which would be quite cool. Still doesn't help with my, my reinforcing here. So, um, hmm, let's have a think. Right, okay, let's take my... I just wonder whether I'm going to be confident with this as a pocket. I mean, it feels kind of robust, to be honest. So I think it may be okay. Let's just... Oh, of course, then I've got the problem of this is up the other way. Right. Okay. 
Don't know how this thumb hole is going to look in amongst this kind of torn edge, but let's give it a try. You don't know until you try these things, do you? So I'm using my big hole punch again, the one that I got recently. Well, it's a, a one and a half inch. So much bigger than I had been using, which is obviously a one inch, which although that's not much different, actually those punches, it does make quite a difference. So this is quite a different colour to this because this is obviously the side where the beeswax was, if you see what I mean. And this was obviously the underside of the beeswax. So that's the, you know, the colour difference. Well, that's that's why there's a colour difference, perhaps I should say. So just glue this down. Or oh, sorry, ink this up and then glue this down. And then I'm going to have to reinforce the folds and I probably have to now reinforce both. So actually that's, yeah, no, that's fine. I thought, oh, is that the bit that's going to be stuck down? But no, it's not. Right, okay, so that's our piece now. So all I'm going to do is just glue this down on there, okay? So just glue that down. Again, you know, you could stitch this. It would turn out lovely. But I'm just going to um, to glue it. It will be just as good. Okay. And then we've got a little sort of foldy out booklet with like a pocket in the middle. Now still wondering what to do now to reinforce obviously my folds. So I think what I might do is just use some paper here and I've got some of that coffee dyed, uh, not coffee dyed, sorry, food coloured paper that I have been using. It's here in my scraps box. So let's just grab some of that. And the reason I think this might look okay is because actually this is picking up the colours that we used on the butterfly quite nicely, isn't it? So if we just kind of turn that over, it's just sort of picking up that. So what I'm going to do is, aha, uh -huh, right, I can probably get both out of here. So I'm going to just tear this down like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to glue it down. Now I'm going to tear it down, I think, both sides. Oh, and now I'm thinking I should have got my ruler out and done this because it probably would have looked a lot better. Oh, well. Let's just go for that. And just going to ink these up a little bit. Like that. Okay, and we'll just then do this one. And I mean, obviously no measuring has gone on here at all. <laughs> Quite the opposite, quite the opposite. Okay, so I'm just going to glue those down. So I'm going to put some glue here in like the crease point. And then I'm just going to glue all around the edges and then a bit in the middle as well. So hopefully I've got that, you know, well covered there to stick down on the crease. I'll just pull that down a bit. Okay, and then I'm just going to get my glue spreader. Like that. Okay. And then just check that that's then, you know, folding. So kind of burnish that in. Like that. 
Okay, just then on the other side as well. Okay, so that's that one, and then this one exactly the same. Just want to have glue along where the crease point is, and then just glue all over on my piece that I'm gluing down. Yeah, so my son will be back um, soon. Well, you know, my husband, my daughter and my son, they'll be back soon. I wonder how he's got on. I hope he's got on all right. It is nerve wracking, isn't it? When, um, you know, if you haven't done something for a while, I, I always feel nervous too. So um, I'm not surprised he was feeling slightly apprehensive, really. But, you know, good for him for going because... Um, it's easy then sometimes when you feel a bit nervous to just think, oh, I won't go. You know, and that's a shame because if you like doing something, you know, why why feel so nervous that it would put you off going, oh my gosh, I don't know what's gone on here. I've obviously got something stuck on there, some sort of ink. Oh, well, never mind. Right, let's just cut this down here and here. Okay, and then what we can do is on these pieces just put some coffee dyed paper or I don't know maybe some of that blue paper here for journaling space. Aha, talk of the devil, I can hear they've just got in. So, yep, we shall hear in a moment how he got on. I mean, could even have a little booklet to be honest in there staple that in and have little pages might be quite nice I mean I love 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 the cover of that Oops. Do I need some more glue under here it's not wanting to stick down is it doily piece and perhaps we could just decorate that up with some other little bits and pieces so uh, again I'm just looking through to see if I've got scraps because obviously you know that's the name of the game here isn't it to use up the scraps is you know what this is hopefully all about and um, getting rid of some more bits and pieces off off the desk using up some book pages and things and um yeah so to use the scraps would be absolutely ideal can't see any in that box that would be just as ideal I do have this right so this is where i've obviously waxed that page and it you know this would just was obviously floating about underneath where i was doing the waxing but obviously it's plainish, so I'm just thinking we could have that there as the the writing space. That would be quite good, wouldn't it? So yeah, should we do that? Let me just trim this down because it's not very straight. Okay, let's glue this on. Whoops. Oh gosh. Come on, glue. I was doing so well, I hadn't had any glue problems, and now suddenly, here they go again. Come on, come on. Let me give it a shake as well. Oh, come on, this is now not very funny. Well, I have to say, I've heard my daughter and I've heard them playing the phone messages back or message, message back. Haven't heard anything from my son, so I hope he's OK. Visions of him just, you know, collapsed in a heap downstairs through exhaustion. OK, so I'm just going to then spread that. Please stick that down. And then the 
boot looked quite nice on there, didn't it? So these boots are so cute. They look they look cute everywhere. They're one of those other embellishments that look really good everywhere. You know, like the bows, like the numbers, like the labels. <laughs> There's lots of things that just seem to fit on every, everything you put them on. And oddly, who who knew? Those boots are one of those things. So, um, yeah, who would have thought that? Very strange, but they do seem to just fit everywhere. Okay, so that's the doily and then the boot. Okay, so that's that side. That looks really nice. And then on the other side, so here, let me just see whether I've got similar again. That's a bit too narrow. Yeah, that's narrower than that. So I've got another piece from what was laying around Okay, well that's quite good because I've got this one which has got some plain, plain on it. Again, let's just trim that down. quite huge on there isn't it it's a lot bigger than the piece I've used here for some reason oh my gosh it's huge compared to that piece yeah did not realize that it was quite so large okay so we could have that like that let me just glue that one down Okay, and again, just spread that with the glue spreader. And then here in the middle, I'm thinking maybe a pocket would be quite good. So yeah, maybe we could do some sort of pocket. Again, let me just, because I want to have another piece here for journaling. So I'm just going to cut, cut that down here, I think. We can just put that there. Okay. Oops. Got some fabric there that every time I move, it's kind of hooked in the glue. So yeah, just moved it out of the way. Oops, that had a piece of the beeswax stuck on there. So I'll see if I can pick that off in a minute. I'll just pop this one down here like that and spread that one out okay and then now could we use any more of this stamped piece so I wonder if we should stamp some more somewhere well I guess what we could do is do like a little stamping piece here in the corner so let me cover this up just going to cover around here so that I don't get it everywhere well hopefully you won't get it everywhere and just then stamp Just going to stamp that little clock there, or just you know that corner in this corner. Okay, I mean that didn't work perfectly, but it's okay. And then, should we have another bit up here? So maybe 
Maybe I could do it like that and oops, like that. I'm just kind of making a little frame here so as I don't stamp the the journaling spot. So we'll do it like that. And we'll have, yeah, so I'm just going to take this little section of the stamp now. We'll just do that up there. Okay. I actually probably should have taken that off of the um, block, to be honest, to do that stamping. It would have been a lot easier. Now, do we want anything else? I'm not sure. So on this middle bit, I think let's have a pocket. So again, let's just have a look, see what I've got that I can use as a pocket. Uh, let's just have a look. Just seeing whether I've got any more of the waxed paper that would just, you know, lend itself just perfectly there. So. decide do you know what I might not have a pocket in there I might just actually decorate in there I wonder if we could use oh no that's just weird isn't it yeah it didn't didn't look good at all perhaps we'll have something else so let's see what I've got from my giant blue book favorites they're just on my desk from another project so maybe we'll just kind of make use of those oh see that boot it's again that boot it just looks gorgeous every single place you put it. I just love it. Okay, let's just ink up the boot. Oops, I nearly dipped it in the stays on. So if I wasn't making a mess enough with the black soot, I then nearly went for stays on. So it would have been even more catastrophic. Ugh. Yeah, I need to get to grips with that black soot because I'm obviously a little bit messy with that and I've kind of dabbed it on other things by accident. It's um, trickier to use than the vintage photo, that's for sure. Not that I've ever heard anyone else say that, so it's probably just me who's actually having, having an issue using it. Uh, right, okay, so I've got that and I'm just going to now pull in my scraps box again. We might just have something like this coming out behind the boot. Yay, like that. So it just kind of finishes that off quite nicely, doesn't it? So like that. Okay. And then we just glue the boot down. I mean, to be honest, we might be able to get away with just gluing the boot down here on the edge. And then it would act a bit like a tuck spot. Oh, come on, glue, come on. Let's give this a try. down there like that still got that word perhaps I'll have that up there okay let's just put that up there like that then I've just got a little something you know on each one of those pages so you've got your journaling space here and here you've got a little tuck spot here behind your boot and then you've got the pocket just up here um yeah I'm going to have to practice with the black soot because clearly that was a little bit beyond me and um yeah I think I made a little bit of a mess mess using it to be honest um much more of a mess than I've ever seen anybody else 
getting when they're using it. I don't know why that would be. But yeah, I need to need to practice, obviously. So but yeah, that's our little sort of pull-out book. So um I think it's turned out quite sweet, really. Need to practice, as I say, with the black soot because that's kind of bothering me slightly, but yeah, not too bad. And gorgeous stamp. So I hope that you liked the um, look of the stamp. I'm going to obviously have a play. I don't think we've got time, unfortunately, to play with these two. So we didn't get as much achieved as I'd hoped, but hopefully we can do that another time. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a great day and see you guys soon. Thanks then. Bye.